to Changing the Sales Game on webtalkradio.com. I'm your host, Connie Whitman. My guests and I are excited that you're joining us today. So here's the deal. I, I get it, right? Changing anything in life is a heavy lift at times. But for us in career and us in sales, really changing the sales game is a needed um, resource. And we have to change that word sales from that icky kind of vibe to one of love, care, and respect. So to help you on your journey of doing that or making that shift in your life and career, in the show notes, you will find my communication style assessment, my gift to you. You will get two reports after taking the CSA. First report, just na- it just it's going to spotlight your natural communication superpowers, which simply means how your message lands. That's what you want to know. Flip side, and to me, this is the more important uh, report, is your lowest score. So when you're communicating with people 180 degree, 80 degrees different than you, how is your message landing? So really dig into that report um, even more so than the superpower one, okay? Again, the link's in the show notes, my gift to you. Now, my, the quote I chose to set the stage for my guests and my conversation is by Maya Angelo. I, I'm very bad with names. I'm sure I've said that wrong, but Maya says, I've learned that people will forget what you said People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And you've all heard the quote. I've heard the quote numerous times. And whenever I do hear it, I'm reminded that marketing is step one in mar- in making a sale, but will not make the sale for you to be relevant and on top of mind for our prospects and our clients alike. We really have to have stellar communication skills, thus the communication style assessment I just shared with you. Um, And we need to have a clear sales process as well. So marketing gets the clients interested and the conversation and relationship will help you make the sale more quickly. It just sets a nice table for us. Both resources are needed and they actually do work in tandem and work together. Um, If you're not clear, if you don't have that clear marketing messaging, then your sales plan is going to fail. So that combination needs to be communicating with each other. So who is my amazing guest, my partner in crime? Her name is Tiffany Newman. Tiffany is a visionary branding strategist who helps driven women entrepreneurs make their message into a movement. After 15 years in the corporate world, working with brands um, like Adidas, Stoli Vodka, mm, she had me at Stoli Vodka, and Burt's Bees, she left the established left to establish a revolutionary branding business that stays one step um, ahead of trends. Tiffany now works with clients worldwide to help them 10X their sales and shine even brighter as thought leaders. She's a contributor for Entrepreneur and has been featured in Forbes multiple times. So please help me welcome my good friend Tiff to the show. So Tiffany, thanks for being on. Yeah, thank you, Connie, for having me. I'm super excited about this conversation. It's an important conversation, Tiffany, because what you do and what I do, we're married, right? So we have to get along. Our messaging has to be be kind of in sync and it has to get along. But there are really two aspects of what we do to get that person not only in the door, buying from us, but then buying over and over and over again, right? Mm-hmm. So um, our, our combined... Um, brilliance is very important. So everybody listening, your brand matters, the sales process matters, and all of that messaging really does go together. So Mm -hmm. here's my first question for you, my friend. You help people ditch that, I'm going to use the word bro marketing tactics, and instead use more conscientious conscientious conversation messaging. Can you talk more about that? Because that's that's my jam, right? That conscientious kind of approach versus that bro vibe. Yeah, absolutely. So really, this stems from kind of the transition that I've been seeing um, happening on the online space specifically since 2020 and probably before. Hmm. But there was a lot of, you know, bro and Becky marketing tactics happening. And and to your point, like the icky sales, you know, that just doesn't feel good, <laughs> which is um, why like your sales game is um, so important. And so that really embodies, like you said, it's the marketing comes before the sale. And even before the marketing comes the brand, because if your brand isn't polished, your brand isn't succinct, your brand isn't conscientious, then that doesn't carry over into your marketing. Your marketing won't work if your brand isn't set up properly. And so I really look at that as how are you creating a values-based brand 
um, that's looking into the future, that's not only creating your legacy, but it's set up to, you know, really create the impact that you were here to create and coming from your purpose, not just like, okay, I'm here to make a ton of money, which of course we all want income and impact. I'm not against that. But really looking at setting that foundation from a conscientious place, like you said, first, and that will lead to, you know, more amazing sales and calling in the right people. I get so many people who are like, well, I'm getting clients, but they're not the right people, you know? And so all of those pieces of the puzzle fit together, like you said. Yeah, you set the table. You really do. And you drive the interest or the curiosity. But then when they get in front of the person, right, who's who's the business owner or what have you, the brand better match, right, that person. And I remember, gosh, mm-hmm. Tiff, I, it, a long time ago, um, yeah, I've been in business 25 years, but I have not had a digital preference presence at all since COVID. That's when I had a shift and pivot pretty, pretty darn hard. And I remember I took a marketing class and they said, well, what's your brand? And I'm like, I don't know, what's my brand? Like, right. I had no idea of any of this language that right now we, we get well-versed in, but it was interesting because, the, and I'm, I'm using the wrong terminology, everybody, trust me, I'm using the wrong terminology, okay. but the vibe was they had, let's say four categories, whatever the training I was taking. One was formal, one was more loving, one was more approachable, whatever the vibe was. And I, I started thinking about what is my brand? I am not formal at all, right? <laughs> Tiffany, we, we're in the same networking group together. She's known me for years. I'm anything but formal. So I thought, well, that's a hard pass. But there were two or three where I sat there thinking, hmm, I wonder I wonder which way I lean because I'm, I had kind of a piece of that, right? So right. hiring a branding expert to be able to dial that in because it we do have multiple personalities or multiple yeah. objectives with our business. So- that that brands could feel scattered, I would imagine, right? Yeah, I love that you 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 picked up on that. Um, I actually call it oftentimes like a Frankenstein brand, <laughs> yeah. where it's disjointed, and and it's no fault of the business owner because we build the plane while we're flying it. Um, a lot, be, previously, there wasn't as much. Um, movement towards having a digital presence. Now it's like, you have to, obviously. Um, although I, I'm not one of those people who think you have to be everywhere. I think you can be strategic and not have to be everywhere. Um, but it's, it's very true. And it's interesting too, that you said, like they had like these kind of buckets and that's where I'm a little bit different than a lot of brand strategists. I tell people not to niche first of all. And also I don't really believe in archetypes. I think archetypes, which is kind of like what you were leaning, you know, yes. Archetypes are really cool. And it's, it's like, we all love personality tests. I love them. Like, Ooh, what, what type am I? But the thing that I found with archetypes is it's helpful to get closer to where you want to be in a brand, but specifically for a brand, if you go towards a specific archetype that doesn't really position you against, um, differently against anybody else who happens to be in the archetype. So what I really like to do, like you said, and that can still be feel disjointed because that's like maybe a part of who you are, that's right. how you lead, but it's not really encapsulating your full identity and who you are because we're multi-passionate, we're multifaceted. And so with the way that I do brand strategy is really making sure that we encapsulate the the overall essence of the person. So if you go and look at like case studies on our website, you can see that every single person has their, their unique essence is showing up. It's not like what looks pretty. It's not what's trendy. It's not what I like. It's who that person is. And I think that's the ultimate way to go. So like you said, you're matching when somebody shows up on a sales call and they're, they're ready to pitch, then that brand and the marketing that they've seen ahead of time, that energy matches. And they're like, Oh, I feel safe. Like this is who I thought I was coming to talk to. Exactly. And that's why everything has to match and and go across. I, I agree. The archetypes, it was interesting for me. Listen, for me as a newbie, I it's was still like, helpful to get started. Yes, oh my gosh. For sure. Tiff, I I really, really had no idea. The other, I love the word essence. It's funny. I, um, I've been teaching a lot lately. I've been training a lot with my clients and this past couple of weeks, the past month, most of them were doing value statements. So I have a worksheet and everything. And then they send it to me and I add it. So I'll give you an example. One young man, a fun fact about him, young, 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 
guy, right? He's he's starting his career and he put in the fun facts he loves to cook. So of course I brought that into the value statement and I said, you know, be, being a, a cook at home, I've learned the importance of having the right ingredients in the combination so I can help. I, that helps me understand and analyze when I sit in front of my clients with their financial picture or their financial um, okay. accounts. So right how you, but I said, but you're a cook. I'm not, a, I'm a broken Italian. That's what my husband calls me, Tiff, because I hate to cook. So to me, that would never be part of my value statement because I wouldn't be able to speak to that. So he just emailed me this morning and said, oh my goodness, I love, and, and it was cute. He said, I love how you spiced up. See, very creative. Cooks are very creative. I love how you spiced up my value statement. Never thought that that was a skill that translate over to the customer. But here's here's the point, right? If we're saying the same thing, it's and I tell them when you write your value statement, it's the essence of your soul. Who is the customer? Real? Yeah, yeah. They're going to get your bank or they're going to get your company or whatever that is. But who are you? And do you match from values and all of that? That's the essence of your soul that comes through. That's what we're talking about. It's not just writing the right copy. It's so much more. We have to, we have to bring our brand to life. If I'm understanding you correctly. Yeah, absolutely. You nailed it. Exactly. Yeah. What are, what are the biggest mistakes that you see people making um, with their brands? Cause you've been doing this for a while now. Yeah. So, I mean, there's quite a few overall. I think the the first thing is just not people don't know what they don't know. Like you just shared, you you didn't know how important a brand was. And that's super common because there's so many shiny objects. There's so many things that we told that we need to do with our businesses. But of course, I'm partial because I'm a brand strategist, but it truly is, I think, one of the biggest and best investments you can make in your business. So I help people. I really look at three things is how can your brand be scalable? Um, like really making sure that you can grow into it instead of reinventing the wheel. A lot of people will make a brand and then two years later, they're like, oh, I need another brand because I'm expanding. That's the, the where the whole idea of the legacy brand comes in, yeah. which we can talk about later, um, that it's sustainable because, um, you know, we burn out easy as entrepreneurs. We put so much on our plate. And so um, I developed what I call a brand operating system, which is um, a trademark that I've developed, which is really making sure that you have all of the foundational pieces of your brand. Um, so once you start growing and scaling, um, you can hand off your brand manual to your team and they can help you execute. And it's not all in your head and all up to you. Yeah. Um, that's a big piece of it. And then ultimately sellable because um, a lot of us, you know, we've been at business for a long time and it's like, we are probably not going to work forever. So I think too many of us don't think out into the future far enough of like, am I actually creating an asset? that I could pass down or sell or even sell part of the business. Yeah. Um, and so that's really what I like to look at and making sure that everything's um, congruent and, you know, one brand operating system. It's a cohesive thing that's packaged and you could sell it, pass it down, whatever. Um, so that's one thing that I see is people aren't asking themselves, like, what is my big vision? How, how would I like, where would I like to take this? Cause we're so in the moment of like, okay, next sale, next, next year, what's the long-term strategy. And then the other piece that really stands out the most is when people think of a brand as their colors, fonts, logos, um, which is a piece of the brand, but really, you know, the old iceberg analogy that's used for a lot of different things, but I'm going to use that because yeah. it's familiar. Those visual pieces above the surface are what we visually can take in as humans. So that's what we consider a brand. But like when I was, um, I also taught branding as a professor for years um, at a college. And what I would always share was that's like um, basically like the icing on the cake. It's like making it look beautiful. It's making it look the part, but you can't just go get pretty colors, fonts and logos and slap it up and consider it to be good. What's underneath the service you mentioned part of it earlier is your messaging. Yeah. Um, it's your offers. It's your marketing strategy. It's where you're showing up. It's who is your ideal client, your taglines. Um, I mean, there's just so much that creates your brand ecosystem that people aren't aware of. 
And then the icing on the cake is that visual strategy. And you can nail the visuals better once you get clarity on all of the things below the surface. And that's the other mistake is that people just will go on Fiverr and grab, okay, here's a logo and some colors. I have my brand. And it's like, no, you have some logos and colors. And honestly, that can look well, but that's not going to help you build a sustainable and long-term business, right? The vibe, the vibe has to be the essence of the soul of whoever, if it's a salesperson, if it's the entrepreneur, it doesn't really matter, but your messaging has to match who you are. Um, you know, right. otherwise it's like, what's it on, on, on the computer, right? Where <laughs> people seek you out and then you find them and they're not what they said they were, right? Whatever it's fishing, whatever it's called out there. Um, but it's the right. same concept, right? People show up and they go, what? You're, you're who I've been talking to through your messaging emails um, or what have you. The other thing you said that I found interesting is everybody, we want it to look pretty, mm -hmm. right? And the colors and and all of those pieces, but we the depth, right? That's where I think people we we approach things superficially. Okay, I have my colors on my logo. I'm branded. I'm ready to go. Next, like what's the next thing? Instead of really refining what we're doing and then implementing things and then going back and refining further. I'm not saying don't continue to earn money right as you get your messaging out there, exactly. but we constantly have to look at our messaging to make sure that it's in line with the new things we're creating or the new offers or whatever's happening in our industry or marketplace. So again, we have to be fluid with this, but we have to be clear. And if, and you've, I, I know you've experienced this too. You go to a networking event and the person, you know, they say, do your 30 second commercial, right? We've been in networking events where you and I on zoom where we've had to do it. And you mm -hmm. always get that one or two person or people who go on and on and on, and they do 5 million different things because they have 20 different businesses. And Tiff, I'm telling you, when they're talking, I'm thinking, there's no way I would hire you because who could run that many businesses and be good at anything? You're not going to, you're not going to be able to give me the attention because you're being pulled in too many directions. So many directions. Now, they could be brilliant at whatever it is that they really do, but their brands, their messaging just in that one instance is off. So then you go to their website, their website is off. Nothing matches and nothing's in alignment. And that's why somebody like you is so needed um, because our stuff might be good. It just might not be a combination of good. Right. Does that make sense? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And what I've seen the most, I wouldn't, this isn't necessarily a mistake, but it's just something that makes me sad is like, Oftentimes, especially with women, because I work primarily with women, but I do work with men too, um, is two things. Um, we don't love to toot our own horn a lot of the times, a lot of people, which is an issue because you have to, but also client case studies can do that for you. So that's a whole different subject. But the other thing is that it really is difficult to yeah, get that message out there if you're speaking to like all the people or if you're too niche. So it's like that sweet spot in the middle that I like to say that you need to find. Um, and it's just really interesting to see how many people, yeah, show up on those networking calls and they can't succinctly share what they do. And or um, a lot of times they they share what they do, but it's not actually painting the picture for people. Like they say, I help people with transformation. Well, what does that mean, right? Like that could mean a million different things. So it's really about getting that succinct, clear message that when somebody hears it, they're like, ooh, I want that, right? Like, so I say I help women make mess their message a movement. Um, as a brand strategist, I don't just say I'm a brand strategist or I create identities for people um, because that speaks to people stronger than, you know, if I just said, okay, I'm, I make brands, that could mean a lot of different things. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about that. You, you do talk about helping people make their message a movement, right? That word mm -hmm. movement is, is very, to me, is a good word um, because I'm thinking we're going to get people out in the world charged up for this movement to change the world, to make it better, to impact greater, right? That's what that word, at least that's what it means yeah. to me. Exactly. Okay. So making their, their message a movement, how do you do that? And so now you're, I feel like you're taking brands on speed by being able to take that brand and actually create the, create the movement for the, for the business. 
Right. And first, I just want to quickly clarify movement because, yeah, like you nailed what it is. And that could mean different things for different people. So for someone like me who I have a boutique agency and I work with, you know, like 50 people at the most a year usually. Um, and I have some communities and things like that. But regardless of that, I don't think my, I don't ever plan on my message reaching like millions of people, maybe thousands. And I'm comfortable with that. That's where I like to play because my goal is to help my shine the light on my clients. And that could mean movement up to millions of people for other people. So I work with a lot of thought leaders and their goal is to get in front of millions, thousands or millions of people, whether they're an author or they're writing their first book or they want to speak on more stages, whatever that looks like. Um, and so really what that is, is the brand is the way we do that. But ultimately, I also help women craft their signature talks. And so... The reason I use that as my tagline, um, and this is a great example of like how this could work for other businesses, is because it's aspirational and it's inspirational for my target audience. And it's calling to a specific person who wants to become either is a thought leader and wants to take it to the next level or wants to become a thought leader, um, whether it's a service provider, a coach, whatever. Um, rather, if I just said, I'm a brand strategist, I create brands for people people would automatically think logos, colors, fonts, you know, cause I, I know my people, I know the market research and I do, we create beautiful websites for our clients as well. Um, but that's not the ultimate goal, right? So the ultimate goal is to shine the spotlight on these primarily women, um, and make their dreams come true, whether it's to partner with Maxwell leadership, like one of my clients, that was her goal. Like I ask clients what their goal is. And she's like, that would be the dream. Sure enough, now she's partnering with them. So we keep nice. those goals in mind and reverse engineer it. So we build the brand to actually attain those goals. It's so interesting as a business owner, the pieces of the puzzle are always moving and always evolving and 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 adding more, right? Our puzzle constantly grows tapestry, call it whatever you want, mm. right? We're weaving our own tapestry. Um, so, you know, I'm on the back nine. I'm, I'm old, well, older, I'm young, I'm older <laughs> in the young, in the young realm, yes. right? I'm in the older of the young realm, but you know, in the next five, eight, 10 years, I, I need to back off, right. And pull away and hopefully have grandkids by then. And those other fun things that life brings. So I'm in the process of doing what you just said. I, partnered with an organization where they have reached to millions of clients, but mm -hmm. then they can niche in based on the industry sector verticals, whatever, um, for my programs and everything is going to be digitally based. So eventually that infrastructure I could sell, my kids could take over, I could get passive income in retirement. We'll see how it, how it unravels, but that's my goal to get 20 years, you know, 25 years I've been in business Tiff, to walk away and just say, okay, I'm closing my doors. I have so much good content. I have so much good right. programs. I've, I've changed, you know, 30, 40,000 people that I've trained um, that they're better now and they're still using the skills 20, 30 years later, you know, whenever they met me, that's, that's right. a movement to me. That's a that's legacy. That's a body of work and a movement. Exactly. And so, but I have to build it to be able to um, turn around in five, eight, 10 years um, and sell it. So all of these things you're saying, it, not to overwhelm people. So that maybe this is the better question to ask. What is the number one thing that you suggest? Well, all the things we're talking about, what's the first thing that they should kind of dig in and start working on to reiterate or make better? Yeah, I would say the very first thing is to take stock of where you're at now and where you need to shift. So um, are you starting out fresh with a clean slate? Well, that's great because, you know, you may be overwhelmed, like I don't have any of those things. Well, at least you can do it the right way from the beginning. Um, maybe mm -hmm. you look around and you're like, oh, I do kind of have a disjointed like Frankenstein brand, um, you know, like I worked with a copywriter here and the messaging sounds like that. And then I write my emails and I worked, you know, somebody else did my social media colors and, and, you know, again, very, very common, but the thing is to pull it in and make it all cohesive. So then it is sellable. Like if you think about, it's not saying that, you know, most of the audience would want to do this, but if you think about like franchising, the, the reason that makes a franchise so successful is because they have a solid brand. Yes, oh. they have the systems in place too. That's important. Um, and they have a model that works, but it's a recognized brand. That's really what 
you're purchasing when you purchase um, that. So in order to sell down the road, that's what I like to think, have people think of, okay, like if I was going to franchise this, not that you're going to, what would the brand need to look like? What would that ecosystem be? Um, and so the first thing, like I'm saying, is to to take stock of the inventory of where you're at. Okay, maybe the messaging solid, but your website's outdated. Maybe your website's incredible, but the messaging isn't aligning. Um, maybe your offers are no you know longer working, or your launch strategy. And as weird as that is, like all of that is part of your brand launch strategy, um, customer experience, like how people are onboarded and offboarded. Um, that is all part of the brand ecosystem. And I think that's the main thing too. Is that like you said, what are the mistakes at the beginning? People don't realize that that's really all branding, you know. And even your marketing is a part of the brand in a sense. And it's interesting because I remember I didn't need a website for the longest time because I've been in business so long. Websites weren't needed. You know, now you kind of need a place to send people for information, quizzes, whatever it might be. <laughs> and I remember um, when I first thought I have to do a website, I thought, oh, I went on, on WordPress and I'm like, they have templates. I could do this. Well, three years later, never did it. Because why? I was running my business, training, talking to people, networking, developing business, right? Doing my jam. I had zero in zippity doodah to have to go into the back end of WordPress yeah. and pins in my eyes so it never happened. So that's another thing. I'm warning my my fellow entrepreneurs out there. Sometimes we're penny wise, dollar foolish. I could do it. I could mm -hmm. do it. I could do it. But what's the cost, right? Time is money. And money is time. So if you outsource that in three months, you're up and running. How could that replenish whatever that cost was for the website, the SEO, the brand, all of the pieces of the puzzle, right? That you should kind of strategize with someone like you. What are the pieces? How are we laying them out? And then put Absolutely. that plan into attack. And then you can earn money while you're paying for all those things. But we put it off thinking, I could do it myself because I don't want to spend the money. You're not spending the money, but you're not making the leverage or getting the momentum that you could to make a difference in the business, in the community, in whatever, whatever it is that you're right. selling. Right. And it's really an, just like anything else. It's actually a tangible investment that has ROI, you know, and yeah. I think a lot of times it's like, again, it's one of those things on the black back burner, like, OK, I can just keep going <laughs> and doing what you're doing. OK, yes, you could. And um, if you really want to, you know, grow more exponentially, um, especially with SEO and then with the advent of AI, that just changes everything, too, because even SEO yeah. is changing. And now it's, you know, that's a whole different ball game. And so um, that's, I think, part of it, too, is if you're not careful, and you don't build what I call the legacy brand and like look for the long term. It's easy then to like build something and then you almost finish building it and you're like, oh, that already feels outdated. I have to shift it again. <laughs> so we really look at like, how can we build it? And so it's a kind of future proofed, at least for a while. And it's it's really the brand for where you want to go, even if you're not there yet, because yeah. it will draw you to it and it positions you in that place, which is yeah. incredible. And and I you, we we forget we're, we're always in the moment of running the business that we forget what is our long term objective. So just interesting, you know. I work with banks, and one of my bankers on the wealth management side, we we're in training, and I don't know what I said, and he said, you know, that could be part of your estate. Tiff, I I said, huh? Because <laughs> I have a <laughs> bunch of URLs, I have all of these assets, I've trademarked things. He goes, all of that should go to your heirs or be able to be sold. Or he said, but there, there's you have a digital library created. Um, and he said that should be part of your wealth management strategy because there's value behind. And Tiff, I looked at him and I go, uh-huh, right? I have an MBA in finance. Everything's changing so quickly that that never even entered my radar. So it, it's just another example of here I'm talking to experts who are doing this day in and day out, right? I haven't done that in 25 years as a financial advisor. And when he heard me say something, he threw something back at me. No idea that that was even a thing today. And as mm -hmm. soon as he said it, I was like, wow, blind spot. Didn't know, didn't even know what to ask. That's why I think people like you are important yeah. because people are listening and go, I don't know what to do. They don't even <laughs> know the first step. So before we go, I want to talk about legacy brands. And then I do want to just reiterate the importance of what I just said before. 
like my experience this week. There is no way we can know everything. So as you have these different events in life, this fluidity of your business, of your whatever it is that you're creating, we need people like you, right, to make sure that we're doing it correctly so that we can set ourselves up for that legacy branding. And that's my really last question. You've mentioned it a couple of times. I'm curious, what does a legacy brand, you kind of talked about it, but sure. why do we need one? And really, no matter where you are on the trajectory of your branding, whether you're starting out and you're a blank slate or you're kind of in the throes, um, why is that legacy brand important for us to keep in mind? Yeah, for for me, you know, I'm in it for the long game. Obviously, you have been and you are continuing to be. And I think there's a lot of like fly by night people who come in and they're like, oh, you know, like quick cash and I'm going to be this. And they they kind of switch their path in entrepreneurship all the time. And that's fine. Um, but first of all, that can confuse your audience a lot if you're constantly like changing lanes all the time. And it's okay to be multi-passionate. I work with a lot of multi-passionates and we talk around bringing that into one cohesive ecosystem, like what's the common thread. But again, we don't often think for the long term. And so if we think about big brands, um, which are legacy brands like Levi's jeans, like they've had slight iterations over the years, their logo might've shifted, obviously maybe the cut of their jeans and, and the brand shifted, but they are what I would consider a legacy brand because they're standing the test of time and they, mm. they pivot along with that, but the foundation and their values and things like that always stay the same. Um, you know, some newer companies like Apple, like you're not going to see them all of the sudden having like really busy packaging or anything like they've boiled it down to simplicity is the ultimate form of sophistication. That's how I would like say the Apple uh, brand yeah. is, um, yeah. say even target, right? Target's never going to just all of a sudden you wake up one day and their logo is purple or, you know, they, they shift how they're doing business. And so these companies built up trust, they built up value, they built up their name and their brand. So it's worth in those cases, you know, billions of dollars. And maybe that's not going to be the case for all of us, especially solopreneurs, thought leaders and things like that. But if you um, really want to reach your goals, you do have to think long picture and long term. And that's the point of the legacy brand. Like I said before, is we look at what is your vision long-term and we reverse engineer that. So we build a brand for where you want to go, not where you are now. And then also it's not about having legacy doesn't necessarily mean like having your name on a building or what have you. But like you said, you have assets, you've built a body of work and those are here, they're, they're assets. And they also can influence people for years to come way, you know, way past the time. If, if we're writing books or creating courses and things like that, um, that brand, as long as it's a powerful brand and it, you know, takes its a life of its own, it becomes a movement that can be here to impact generations for years to come. And I, you know, especially in our chaotic world, I really think that entrepreneurs are the ones that are going to um, change the world. And, and we need we need to share our message. Our voices need to be heard now more than ever. And that's really the sense of like yeah. what a legacy brand is. Yeah. And, and I think the bottom line is we, we have to work smarter, not harder. Mm. And we need to know when to bring in experts. We need to know when to do it ourselves, right? Because we're the only ones who have our secret sauce for our business. So there are certain things that we should be doing and not outsourcing, right? right. We have to know what that looks like and how what what's your zone of genius. And it's funny, as you're talking, I'm thinking of the salespeople um, that I work work with, they could take this information because uh, let's say I work for Prudential or I work for Vanguard or I work whatever, whatever the financial company is um, that they're employed by, they have their brand, but you know, financial advisor, there's a bazillion out there, bankers, there's exactly. a bazillion out there. How do you leverage your soul, your essence to make a difference in your community or who, whatever uh, area that you're servicing or, or where your clients, right? That brand of you is beyond the prudential or whatever, whatever the business, um, you know, like you said, target. Who are you, though? part of that organization, you're representing that organization, but who are you? And I right. think that brand, personal brand, yeah, the personal brand, I think is very important um, as well. Oh my God, there's so many topics. There's so many topics. <laughs> All right. So guys, here's the deal. 
She's lovely. Is she not? She's my friend. So of course she's lovely. Mm -hmm. So go to her website, check it out. So you really get a vibe of who Tiffany is and what her team um, potentially could do for you. So the website is yourlegacybrand.com. If you have a question that's very specific, just email uh, Tiffany. It's support at yourlegacybrand.com. And I know you have a gift for everybody. Um, yourlegacybrand.com yourlegacybrand.com slash quiz. What is the quiz? Can you tell us? Sure. Yeah. So the quiz shows you what your current brand operating system is. So again, when I work with clients, I help them actually create a brand operating system. So it's um, not a guesswork. You're not constantly guessing anymore what you what your brand is. And so first, like I said, the first step is to see like where you stand. So by taking a quick quiz, it will tell you, you know, are you, you know, disjointed? Are you this? Are you that? And then I'll start to show you how you can actually take the first steps to shift that. Um, nice. But again, first you have to know kind of where you're starting from. Yeah, absolutely. Again, I don't know where I'm going because I don't even know what step to take, right? Left, right, forward, back, whatever it might be. Because sometimes right. a step back could be a giant step forward, right? So Exactly. Yeah. And a lot of yeah. people say, what is the first step? And ask that question. I'm like, well, it really depends on who you are and where you are at in business. And again, like whether you're building a personal brand or a business brand, I mean, there's, there's so many things to think about. And so that's, that's really the best step is to take stack where you're at now, and then you can start to move forward. And I like it because the quiz will help them start to take stock of what they should be looking at. That's already created, right? Don't let's not just throw the baby out with the bath. Exactly. So we can look at this, this will ground them and then, then maybe reach out to you with questions because they'll, they'll have tangible questions to ask that then you could be very insightful with their specific situation. I know mm -hmm. it, people that go, well, what's the next step? I don't know. I have a million questions to ask you before I can make a recommendation, right? If, exactly. if people make a recommendation after a three second conversation with you, my advice is always run the other way. They don't have enough intel on you to make any recommendation. Um, so I like the idea of the quiz, then reaching out to you to say, well, this is how it's shaken out. What do you think? But now you have mm -hmm. some tangible meat to be able to talk and give some recommendations, whether they hire us or not, right? We're still here to share and educate and help people move the needle, um, especially if they don't have the funds, right? But that we could still help in other ways. So just make sure, take the quiz, talk to Tiff, and she will direct you in the right um, um, the right place to go. Um, thank you so much, my friend, for being on. And this is important. And I feel like this is the, I'm going to use the first step, but I do think branding is the first step before we get into the marketing, before we get into the copy, before we get into our offers, and then before we get into the actual sales com uh, conversation, I think they all need to be woven together semi-simultaneously, but I think we need to understand, like somebody comes to me, I go, ah, I don't know how to fix your brand. I don't even know. I, I like you. I don't know what to tell you to do with that. Right. So I have to hand off to people like you um, because I stay in my lane. So again, take the quiz, reach out to Diff. No question is a stupid question unless you don't ask it, then that's just being plain out si silly. So thank you again, my friend, for being on and, and sharing yeah. your zone of genius. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you so much for having me, Connie. I yeah. loved the conversation. Yeah. I always love hanging out with you. Um, and you guys, I, I truly, you, I say this every show, Tiffany, information's a beautiful thing. Tiff gave us a lot of ideas. The quiz is a great call to action for the, for your first step forward um, to create that change, right? The show is about changing your sales game. Um, so take the quiz. That's a great call to action. Listening and understanding everything Tiffany said is great. Information in your brain isn't going to put money in your pocket. Is it going to have you grow your skills? Is it going to make any difference in your life? Because it's in your brain. Take action. I promise you those reactions create magic and wonderful things find you and happen to you. So please, please um, take the quiz, reach out to Tiff, whatever is most comfortable for you, but do something. And that's my message for taking action, baby. <laughs> that was my sales. That's my sales hat, right? You got to take action. <laughs> Uh, thanks again, Tiffany. And thank you for joining me weekly as we question, build and discover together, no matter where you are on changing your sales game. My guests and I, we have you, we have your back. And I hope our stories, our ideas, our content, our topics help you create whatever that next sometimes baby step is so that you can change your sales game with a little bit of ease and grace.
So thank you for tuning in to Changing Your Sales Game with me, your host, Connie Whitman on webtalkradio.com. I am truly inspired that you follow me, you listen to the show every week, and I'm honored that you trust my guests and I on your journey of changing your sales game. Um, Have a wonderful week, everyone, and I will see you next time. Thanks a million. 